Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today in, in, in an interview with Sara Cash, uh, who has curated the exhibition Sargent and Spain in the National Gallery of Art. And I want to, uh, to thank uh, Sara for being here today and uh, give us a, like an overview of this really, really uh, unique exhibition, Sargent and Spain. I want to give a brief introduction of uh, Sara's uh, uh, work during the, all these uh, years. Uh, Sara is uh, currently the Associate Curator of American and British Paintings at the National Gallery of Art. Um, she pre Previously, she served as a curator of American art at the Corcoran Gallery of Art and earlier held positions at the Mayer Museum of Art, the Amon Carter Museum, Yale University Art Gallery and the National Portrait Gallery. Sarah has curated the exhibition with Richard Ormon and, the, and Elaine Kilmurray, uh, who are the world's uh, uh, leading authorities on Sargent and uh, also authors, uh, among many other publications, of the uh, uh, Catalogue Raisonné of Sargent's Oil and Watercolors. Uh, the exhibition, uh, uh, Sargent and Spain, uh, presents for the first time uh, around 120 of the astonishing oils, watercolors, and drawings as a result of his seven trips to, to Spain during his adulthood. Many, many of, these, of these artworks are rarely exhibited, uh, which is a, a really an, an, an unique opportunity to see these dozen uh, artworks. And in general, this, the, 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 show, the show spans all the genres uh, that Sargent represented uh, in his trips uh, to, to Spain. Copies and personal interpretation of Spanish masters in, in painting, mostly. And uh, also he represented scenes of music and dance, architectures, uh, gardens, uh, landscapes, a uh, portrayal of, of people that he encountered in these in this, uh, in this trips, and also uh, uh, studies uh, of religious architecture and uh, ima imaginary. I want to start, uh, uh, Sarah, just with the with the very beginning of the exhibition uh, about the birth of the exhibition how did you just came up with the, with this uh, exhibition which by the way it was very very necessary oh <clears throat> thank you um thank you christina i'm happy to happy to be here this morning thank you for having me and um, happy to talk about uh talk about the origin of the exhibition uh, <clears throat> As you mentioned, I co-curated the exhibition with Richard Ormond and Elaine Kilmurray, the world's leading scholars on John Singer Sargent. And <clears throat> I arrived at the National Gallery in uh, 2015. And uh, after I arrived, I began to uh, look into the Sargent holdings of the National Gallery, the paintings and to and uh, research files to try and think about an exhibition that I would be interested in working on from that that uh, included at least one work from the National Gallery's collection. At about the same time that I was uh, thinking about that, Richard Ormond, who you mentioned, is who lives in London, approached me, and this was in the spring of 2017. Uh, about the possibility of co-curating an exhibition about Sargent and Spain. It's an exhibition that he had uh, was very interested in doing. He had been um, he had guest curated exhibitions at the National Gallery previously, along with Elaine Kilmurray. Also, Richard and I had co-curated an exhibition at the at the Corcoran Gallery of Art in 2009-10 about John Singer Sargent and the Sea. So he suggested that we collaborate on this project because he knew me and he'd worked with the National Gallery and had been also a visiting professor at the National Gallery at one point. And so that is how we began in the spring of 2017. So we had worked on the project for about five and a half years when the exhibition opened on October 2nd. Uh, Richard, Elaine, and I 
And it was a fascinating project to work on. Of course, uh, we relied very heavily on the nine volume catalog raisonné prepared by Richard and Elaine, uh, which has, as you can imagine, lots, as you know, Christina, lots of information on Sargent's oils and watercolors uh, that he made throughout throughout his life. So uh, that is the that was the beginning of the exhibition, and we, I remember actually beginning with a very very comprehensive list drawn from the catalog raisonné of all of the works that Sargent made in Spain, oils, watercolors, drawings. Uh, made in Spain, or I should say either in Spain or as a result of his travels to Spain. That's why the exhibition, the exhibition is titled Sergeant and Spain, as opposed to Sergeant in Spain, because, excuse me, although it's a lot about his travels to the country, it is also about the, it is largely about the works of art that he produced while he was traveling, but also when he returned to his studios. Um, so we we began with this enormous uh, spreadsheet of hundreds of works that Sargent had made in Spain had made in in uh, and as a result of his travels in Spain and uh, sort of looked at those, narrowed things down, thought about who owned which work, what would make a good exhibition, uh, what sort of themes we would focus on, um, and that kind of thing. So that's how that's how the exhibition. Developed, of course, it had its it had many challenges as all exhibitions do, but especially had challenges as um, as COVID descended on the world in March of 2020. Uh, but I'm proud to say that we developed a, what I think is a very successful exhibition, despite the challenges that we faced over time. I know you um, you enjoyed seeing the exhibition a few weeks ago yourself. Absolutely, it was really, really breathtaking. Something that is really interesting in the exhibition is, is the way you uh, like stage uh, the the exhibition in different rooms, uh, more or less devoted to the to the different genres. Can you just uh, like give us a little bit more information about this uh, this kind of display? Of course, the, the way we organized the exhibition in the, in the different themes, we had uh, Richard Elaine and I thought a lot about this. Would we would we organize the exhibition um, thematically? Would we organize it chronologically? What would what would be the best way to organize this amazing and fascinating and rich body of material? So we came up um, with what I call or perhaps other people call kind of a chronothematic chrono -thematic organization. So there's some chronology and some um, thematic organization in the exhibition itself. The first gallery is very much about Sargent seeing Velasquez in the Prado in Madrid on that first trip in 1879 and, and soaking up everything that he could learn by making these not precise copies, but riffs or interpretations after Velasquez's paintings um, that he saw, 12 or 13 of them. So um, <clears throat> the first gallery has uh, many of those works, including Sargent's own uh, wonderful interpretation of Las Meninas. And it also emphasizes, it also brings out the, the influence of Goya and El Greco on Sargent, and also the lasting influence of Velasquez on Sargent and his art, his portraiture, his, his genre scenes. So the second and third galleries of the exhibition address Sargent's um, strong interest in music and dance that also developed on that first trip in 1879 when he did also, he went to Madrid, but also to, uh, to other locations to uh, Granada and Sevilla in Andalusia. So um, music and dance, uh, uh, he, it, Sergeant generated so much work um, on the subject of music and dance in um, soon after the first trip, but also in 1890 when he met the famous dancer La Carmencita in New York City. Uh, then the uh, the exhibition moves into a gallery about architecture and gardens, featuring works from really throughout uh, the, uh, all of the different travels that Sargent made 
to Spain from 1879 on to 1912. The gallery after that uh, is about the landscape uh, of the landscape and the people, and I might add the animals of Spain. <laughs> Sargent was, he loved animals and painted beautiful um, informal paintings of Spanish people, including Spanish Roma people, but also painted uh, landscapes and genre scenes and um, wonderful, uh, sometimes whimsical images of animals. The next gallery, which is the next to last gallery in the exhibition, addresses both of Sargent's trips to Mallorca in 1908. Um, and the final gallery of the exhibition, the topic of that gallery is spirituality and religion. And Sargent's, <clears throat> as I mentioned, his strong interest in uh, religious imagery in Spain. And the major sub-theme of that gallery is Sargent's Triumph of Religion murals at the Boston Public Library and how his work in Spain, the, um, the, the works of art that he created in Spain, what he saw in Spain, uh, even photographs that he collected of, of churches and altarpieces uh, in Spain, how all of that work informed five of the paintings in Sargent's Triumph of Religion murals. So that's how the show was organized. And I'm also happy to say there's a final gallery of the exhibition where people can people can rest because it is a large exhibition. They can read uh, books. They can uh, look at the exhibition catalog. Uh, there are uh, books on Spain for children. And we have provided um, some wonderful, very large photo murals that I love about Sergeant tra Sergeant's travels, what the Prado looked like uh, when Sergeant first encountered it in 1879, uh, a place that people can kind of think about the context of the exhibition. So that's the that is the um, the organization of the show. Uh, yeah, it was really great. They have to say that I, I am particular, par particularly fond of uh, his uh, depictions of Granada and Mallorca. I I believe that uh, uh, he he had a, a very particular sensibility to towards those uh, two cities, like uh, representing like a very uh, uh, naturalistic and and like luminous, uh, especially watercolors, uh, which is uh, something that I really enjoyed during the exhibition. One of uh, my 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 questions, uh, which is, uh, I guess, many people' uh, questions, <clears throat> is why? Because in in my opinion, uh, uh, Sargent's renderings on, uh, on on Spain are very unique. In, in my opinion, none other foreign artist uh, represented Spain in that way, uh, the sergeant, in the way sergeant did. And uh, what do you think that uh, um, <clears throat> sergeant found in, in Spain, what ignited uh, his his uh, his interest for, for Spain and uh, to go back so many times in his life? And uh, uh, also like traveling to, the, uh, to, to locations that are very, very, uh, uh, rarely uh, uh, visited by by foreigners like um, foreigners like um, I don't know uh, Santiago de Compostela or Cuenca uh, I mean so uh, those are uh, locations beautiful locations but the, they they were not trips that other uh, other uh, foreign artists uh, uh, did in in Spain yeah not not necessarily uh, on on the beaten path you might say so. Uh, so Sargent traveled to Spain uh, seven times over the course of six different years. Uh, uh, in 1879, when he was 23, was his first adult trip to Spain. He, he traveled there once, at least once as a teenager with his family, uh, we know, to Granada. So he traveled uh, to Spain in 1879, 1892, 1895. 1903, 1908, and 1912. Uh, and in 1908, he went to Mallorca twice, once to um, to visit and, as he called it, make a flying visit to see if everything was to his liking and then returned later in the autumn of 1908. So um, 
then Sergeant, um, so each of the trips, well, especially the first trip in 1879, uh, when when Sergeant was 23, that trip had a very specific impetus. Uh, Sergeant had been studying in Paris in the studio of his mentor um, and his teacher, Carolus Duran. And Carolus Duran told Sergeant uh, when Sergeant was getting ready to leave his uh, his studio, Carolus Duran said. To Sergeant, now go study Velasquez, 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 ceaselessly study Velasquez. So uh, it was Sergeant's interest in doing that and his uh, subsequent visits to the Prado as a copyist in October and November of 1879. Um, those were the impetus for that first trip. That And that is what's uh, uh, so interested him then. He, as we know, he also became very interested on that first trip in Spanish music and dance. The, um, I, I think that that is what, as as you say, Christina ignited his interest, and he returned uh, on those six subsequent trips for various reasons. Uh, in 1892, he was visiting family in Camperdon in the northeast of Spain, not for very long. Uh, and the other trips, it, he kept returning again and again. I think he was just, he was so drawn to the country. And it was very different from the places that he lived. Of course, he lived in Paris until the early 1880s, mid-1880s, and relocated to London. Uh and did, of course, travel extensively uh, as a child and as a teenager with his parents, who were Mex American expatriates living in Europe. And Sargent traveled to um, widely in Italy, uh, in Egypt, in Morocco, in, uh, in Switzerland, many, many different places. But I think that um, one reason he kept coming back to Spain is because in his perception anyway the Spain the country was was very different from those other locations um, in Mediterranean country uh, and brought to him something that um, they kept drawing him back I I'm hesitating only a little bit only because as you know Christina their sergeant left behind really nothing in the way of memoirs, lists, um, letters that he might have received, diaries. Um, and so we can only speculate and we only know a little bit from letters that he wrote to other people about the reasons that he traveled to Spain. The, the great side of that is that we have the works of art themselves as testimonies to his interest in all of these different aspects of Spain uh, and Spanish life. And he, um, after 1890, when he received the commission to work on the Triumph of Religion murals at the Boston Public Library, he had not a changed impetus to visit Spain, but an added, an added draw because he he began to um, not in any way exclusively focus on um, religious imagery, but it was an added interest of his when he when he traveled to Spain after 1890 because he had in the back or maybe the front of his mind um, his work on these murals in Boston and was thinking a lot about um, the rituals of Spanish Catholicism and the the imagery that he saw in Spain. A long answer to your question, but... <laughs> I, I I understand it's not an easy question because we don't actually know what the uh, uh, sergeant uh, thought about, uh, about this plane. We have just a few uh, comments uh, here and there. Uh, um, uh, the last question, um, you mentioned uh, that there are uh, some uh, photographs in the, in the exhibition. To me, that was really, really interesting as well. There is a part of the exhibition that, uh, devoted to this uh, collection of uh, uh, photographs, and most of them uh, uh, were 
or some of them were taken by the the, by the, the, the very same sergeant, but all of them uh, were part of the, his collection. He collected uh, uh, many, many uh, uh, photographs uh, of many other uh, places, but uh, among them, uh, Spain. Uh, and to me, this is a, a, a very interesting point. How, uh, uh, what, what was the role of uh, uh, the photographs in, in, in Sargent's uh, art? Which is uh, which is uh, uh, something that many many other uh, artists of his time shared that uh, interest for photography. Yes, it's it's um, really interesting. I uh, the sergeant, as you mentioned, he he collected really hundreds of photographs of Spain um, and photographs of other places too. But obviously for our purposes, we're focusing on the ones that he collected uh, that depict Spain photographs. Um, primarily taken by, or, or I should say all of them really taken by commercial photographers, um, active in, uh, many of them active in Spain, and uh, photographs depicting architecture, sculpture, um, Velasquez paintings in the Prado, people. Um, Sergeant even was fascinated apparently by the armory in the, the uh, Royal the Royal Armory in Madrid, and he owned photographs of some of that armor. So he he um, was an inveterate collector. I, I also I often think of him as an inveterate collector of people and things, you know, friends and family, and and immersing himself. Even though he was not, I gather he was not especially um, um, extroverted, but he did have uh, many friends in his orbit, and he collected collected uh, photographs as well as as well as people and as well as friends. So the photographs, um, some of them are included, a good number of them, 40 of them actually, 40 photographs of Spain that Sargent collected are included in a major scrapbook from the 1870s that is in the collection of the Metropolitan Museum of Art that we feature in the exhibition and share the 40 images of the Photo photographs of Spain in that scrapbook uh, through a PowerPoint in the exhibition. Uh, there's another scrapbook that we feature in the show digitally, a scrapbook that belongs to the Harvard Art Museum, which is too fragile to be lent, uh, which includes, among other things, uh, again, uh, photographs, in this case, photographs of the tile work at the Alhambra, which so fascinated Sargent. There's a uh, uh, in addition, there are over 200 photographs of Spain uh, in the collection of the Victoria and Albert Museum. And those are part of a gift of over 600 photographs that sergeants that Sergeant collected and his sisters gave to the VNA after Sergeant's death. And we've displayed those exhibition, those photographs in the exhibition, not all of them, not all 200, uh, only um, 20 something in various galleries in the exhibition to show kind of a window into Sargent's mind. What was he interested in, in collecting? What was he looking at? What was he going to these photographers shops and studios and sort of going through and purchasing and um, adding to his collection of aid memoir, his, his um, treasure trove of, of uh, objects that would inspire him over time. So there's that very strong interest. And then Sargent uh, took uh, two different types of photographs. Again, we don't have the memoirs or the, or the letters saying, I took these photographs, but all the photographs that I'm speaking of uh, that I feel quite certain that Sargent made descended in one group descended in his family. The other group is known to have been given by Sargent to his close artist friend, Wilfred de Glane, and those descended in de Glane's family. So the two, two types of photographs are these uh, wonderful small photographs um, that are printed on postcard paper, which is a, um, a sort of... Uh, Kodak, in 1903, Kodak released uh, a very special kind of camera where you could take these photographs and have them developed in postcard paper, it became postcard stock. It became kind of a craze. The sergeant got in on the craze and <laughs> used his special camera to make these very small photographs. And in one case, we see him uh, taking photograph, three photographs of a fountain in the hospital of St. John of God in Granada. And 
and looking at them and using them as raw material, using them, I think, to help him figure out how to frame the watercolor, two watercolors that he actually made in the very same location, depicting the very same fountain. Sergeant, in addition to those so-called real photo postcards, just what they're called today, uh, Sergeant also worked with a stereograph camera and made uh, apparently hundreds of glass stereographs that depicted um, places that he was, places that he traveled. Uh, all the photographs I'm talking about that Sergeant made, that we believe he made, date from the final trip to Spain, where he spent uh, almost all of his time in Granada. <clears throat> And the glass stereographs depict uh, different locales, uh, as do the, po the photo postcards depict different locales in Granada. Some of them are linked to his works of art. Others are uh, a record of places that interested, in him, interested him and that he wanted to photograph. So I... Uh, I think it's this is not the first time that people have taken note of his interest in photography, but I think it's the first exhibition in which these photographs figure fairly prominently and his interest in collecting them and also taking them, not, not as ends un, unto themselves uh, uh, in any way, but I think really as uh, he had a keen interest in everything around him in new, well, photography was not new in, in the early 20th century, but these new types um, um, uh, the, the real photo postcards was that was new in 1903, and so he was interested in engaging himself in this this type of uh, early technology. In as he was thinking about, uh, as he was traveling, and as he was studying, and as he was capturing the uh, the scenes that he saw in Spain. Very interesting, and it was uh, in part like uh, his own archive of images of uh, uh, his uh, yeah. history. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Uh, also, uh, um, uh, sergeant, uh, many sergeant uh, paintings or watercolors uh, are uh, like uh, very a uh, photography uh, photography uh, inspired uh, the 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 ways he frames uh, the the. The images is, is, uh, is are very inspired by photography, which is uh, uh, something really modern and very interesting in his uh, in his work. He has really really uh, uh, difficult and unique uh, uh, like frames and 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 in, in his images. And I I really think that uh, photography had a, a lot of uh, influence in those uh, in those. Yes. I, I agree. I um, absolutely agree. I think you can see, especially in uh, paintings and watercolors and drawings that he made in Mallorca, for example, of the vegetation, the very lush vegetation on that island of pomegranates and fig leaves. And even um, in in other scenes that we see throughout the exhibition, and, and not just in Spain, uh, uh, other places that he traveled, but in this exhibition, we it's, it's, he seems to almost always be choosing that unusual angle or the oblique view or a painting that is not, um, we'll say, traditionally composed with a head-on view of something. Um, there, if you, As you walk through the exhibition, you see him, as you say, Christina, um, framing these uh, works of art that he's making. And I imagine sometimes thinking about photography, the way he's can cut a person off just uh, you know so in showing part of their body or part of an animal and just literally chopping things off at the edge of the frame of some of the the works of art i i think um a lot of that uh is due to his interest in photography not all of it certainly i mean he had his style and he developed his style but i think that there is that we have to consider anew that aspect of his, uh, those aspects of his working methods, I think, and think more, a lot more about them. He's not the only artist who, um, of course, uh, Thomas Aikens is another artist who's um, not, not recent now, but um, I don't know, recent in the whole big scheme of things, discovery of photographs that he, uh, that he took himself and that he owned shed a whole new light on his um his way of working so i find it fascinating fascinating uh i'll i'll be like 
hours and I was uh, uh, talking with uh, with you, Sarah, but I, I I don't want to to steal more time from you. I'm sure you are busy. And uh, I want to thank you so much for this uh, interesting and revealing uh, uh, talk about uh, Sargent and Spain. And uh, thank you so, so much. And I want to encourage everybody in the US uh, to travel to, to Washington if you are not there and watch this exhibition because it's really worth it. It's really unique um, and the sergeant's renderings and renderings of Spain are really, really uh, worth it to visit. And congratulations for that really amazing ex exhibition. Christina, it's been so nice to, to be with you. Yes. and. I would love anyone who can to, as Christina said, to come to see the exhibition, which is open uh, through January 2nd. We are only closed on Christmas day. We are open every other day from 10 to five. Uh, and the exhibition will be at the Legion of Honor, as, as Christina said, at the Fine Arts Museum of San Francisco from February 11th through May 14th. And uh, I, don't, I don't get any benefits from telling you this, but the very beautiful, I think very beautiful exhibition catalog that we produced is if you, whether or not you can make it to the exhibition, that catalog is available through the National Gallery's website or wherever you, wherever you like to buy your books. Um, so that's something that uh, people can have, even if they can't make it to the show, which, which I hope they can. And thank you so much for this opportunity to, to speak about the exhibition and to spend more time with you, Christina. I really enjoyed it so much. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah.